I was going to start this video off today with the traditional Tarzan yell like he does in the jungle beating on his chest and I tried it and I started choking so I deleted that and I thought I'd go with just uh, just my regular voice. Today Tarzan, uh, the original Tarzan dude of course, was uh, Mr. Elmo Lincoln and I, I hate to say this because I'm not beautiful but of the multitude of actors to play Tarzan, Elmo Lincoln was he was ugly. I know that is unkind, but it's true. He first donned the loincloth in 1918, and of course what people thought was good looking back then really is a lot different from today. Let's talk though a little bit about Elmo Lincoln and his now historic portrayal of Edgar Rice Burroughs' Tarzan, and if you want to see the silent classic, it is here on YouTube both for free and for pay. Elmo Lincoln was born at Rochester, Indiana, way, way back on February 6, 1889, and his actual name was not Elmo Lincoln, but rather Otto Elmo Lincolnhelt. And Mr. Lincolnhelt was of age, um, when he was of age, he was employed as a peace officer in Arkansas, and he certainly had the physical build to be a peace officer. He went to work then for legendary film director D.W. Griffith on his 1912 film, The Battle of um, the Battle of Elderber Elderbush Gulch. I keep wanting to say Elderberry Gulch. <laughs> Anyways, it is said that in a fight scene in that movie, Lincoln's shirt was partly torn, showing off his powerful chest. Griffith, always on the lookout for a great actor, took note of this and uh, told him that he was quite impressed. And Griffith changed his name to Elmo Lincoln and featured him in several upcoming films. And uh, thankful, thank goodness for the film audience as he changed the name because Lincoln Hart, uh, or Helt, is a mouthful to say. But actually, between the Battle of um, Elderbush Gulch in 1912, he was featured in 12 other films before he finally landed Tarzan in 1918. Before we go on, let's stop here and take a brief look at a scene from Elderbush Gulch.
All right, that was an interesting clip. I'm wondering if in these scenes there was were any actual Native Americans employed. Some of the other pre-Tarzan movies that he was in, though, included the historic Birth of a Nation in 1915. And next, we'll take a uh, look at a clip from the 1970 film, 1970, 1917 film, Aladdin and the Wonderful Lamp, in which Lincoln was also featured. So let's take a look at that clip. An exciting scene indeed. Also before his starring role in Tarzan, he was featured in The Fatal Glass of Beer in 1916, as well as the classic Intolerance in the same year. And also in 1916, Tarzan author Edgar Rice Burroughs decided to produce a movie version of his uh, 1914 novel, Tarzan of the Apes. And after having been turned down by several studios, he decided to go it on his own. Burroughs offered rights to the novel to uh, William Parsons, who was an insurance salesman in Chicago. He had also been a fairly well-known movie star by the name of Smiley Billy Parsons. Now, Smiley put together a production company, National Film Corporation of America, and provided Burroughs with $50,000 in the company's stock. <clears throat> Burroughs gave control <clears throat> of the movie to Parsons, but regretted it later when Parsons cast Elmo Lincoln in the role and Burroughs was not happy with that. He would have liked uh, Swedish actor Stefan Wood Windrow, who went by the name Winslow Wilson. Ultimately, though, Wilson was cast, um, and in the spring of 1917, production began, but not in Sar some far off jungle, rather in Louisiana. Stock footage of the Brazilian Amazon would be cut in later for scenes of the jungle. But after a month's worth of shooting was done, Winslow, an ensign in the U.S. Naval Reserve, was called to active duty, which screwed things up royally. The producers needed to find a replacement, so they brought Elmo Lincoln out from Los Angeles, and the role fell to him. But Wilson was not totally thrilled with it, though. Lincoln, you see, was afraid of heights, so the scenes when, uh, of Winslow up in the trees were actually used, and he was paid $1,000 for giving up his right to be credited in the film. El Elmo Lincoln's physical build was quite stocky. He was 5'11 and weighed in at around 230 pounds. And if they were going for a primitive look, Lincoln fit that bill 100%. However, that wasn't uh, uh, Burroughs' concept at all of what he wanted Tarzan to be, and he was actually sickened by the repugnant-looking actor to play the role. The movie turned out to be lengthy, eight reels, and was released by First National Pictures as... Uh, Tarzan of the Apes, and it was a monster hit. It gave the production company $1 million in profit, which would translate to around $18 million today. 
Remember, this film was released in the post-Victorian era, and though Burroughs thought Lincoln ugly, he, with his bare chest and thighs, became a major sensation with women still, who were still wearing petticoats and long skirts. Parson also um, ticked Burroughs off by making major changes to the story and cast, but Burroughs' hands were tied, for if you well remember, he handed creative control over to Parsons. And again, <clears throat> over objections from Burroughs, Parson went right into the production of a, of a serial sequel, The Romance of Tarzan. And later, in order to get um, what was due him, Burroughs was forced to sue Parsons for unpaid royalties. So he's trying to give it to Parsons all, or to Burroughs all the way around. While all this uh, squabbling was going on, Elmo Lincoln starred in a hit for Universal Pictures, The Kaiser, The Beast of Berlin, in 1918. And Elmo was reunited with uh, Endred Markey, who portrayed Jane uh, in The Romance of Tarzan. Uh, it was a low-budget production, and unlike the original movie, there was very little of the jungle in it. In the movie, Jane takes Tarzan back to England, but by the end, Tarzan returns to the jungle. Curtis, or excuse me, Curtis, critics were not kind to the movie. Um, they were being very critical of Tarzan's portrayal as a society man instead of the king of the jungle. Quality had been sacrificed also, with critics saying it looked like it was shot in a bargain basement. But to Burroughs' relief, Parsons' option to the Tarzan franchise uh, was up, and he signed a new deal with Numa Pictures as they promised to faithfully follow his books. Numa tried to sign Elmo Lincoln to reprise his role, but he was under contract to Universal Pictures and was unavailable. However, Elmo Lincoln was far from being through with Tarzan. It gets rather complicated, however. Lincoln was playing in action-oriented films for Universal. To get him back to the Tarzan franchise, Great uh, Western Productions got uh, rights to the franchise from Numa Pictures. And Great Western had connections with Universal, and so he was uh, released from his contract so that he could uh, play his defining iconic role as Tarzan. But Elmo Lincoln last appeared as Tarzan in a 15-part serial released in 1921 <clears throat> and was titled The Adventures of Tarzan. However, he did appear in two other Tarzan movies, but in small roles. Curiously, Elmo's stunt double Frank Merrill went on to himself star as Tarzan in the final silent film and first sound film of the franchise. Lincoln's 15-part serial, The Adventures of Tarzan, was a box office hit and even outgrossed heartthrob Rudolph Valentino's classic film, The Sheik. And that, my friends, is the end of the story of Elmo Lincoln's portrayal of Tarzan. Of course, Tarzan went on to become one of the most popular movie franchises in history. Tarzan not only found real ready audiences for books, film, but also on radio and later on television. In total, I believe there have been around 27 Tarzan movies, with many actors donning the loincloth, and so that's the story. Be sure to check out um, my other videos, subscribe so you don't miss out on anything, and uh, thanks for stopping by. Stay well, and God bless.